Thank you very much for coming. Uh, let me start uh, introducing myself. My name is Wasim. I'm a pro uh, program manager in Microsoft. I work uh, in Skype team as a program manager for Skype for Business, focusing on Cloud PBX and specifically on uh, devices strategy. Uh, I hope the title is not very confusing. Today we're talking about phones, specifically out of our device portfolio. Before I start, probably you've seen this in a couple of uh, sessions today. We have a giveaway. For you who doesn't know this, this is the new Skype meeting uh, solution. Uh, we have this out of Microsoft and Logitech. Uh, all you need to do is tweet a picture with the uh, device out of an hour boot. For you who have uh, had previous experience with Skype for Business uh, devices or linked devices before, know that we had multiple uh, or a couple of lines of uh, phones before. So I thought today I'll start with the strategy. Where did we come from? What devices do we have? And where are we moving forward with that? Just to clear the uh, strategy for us. I'll move then to the uh, devices portfolio. What is the portfolio of devices we have today in terms of form factor and different usages? And what is the plan going forward there? IT Pro plan and deploy, and that's where we'll spend the majority of the time today. We're going to look into how to manage, deploy, uh, provision first of all, operate uh, those uh, devices. End user experience. We have a lot of content here, so I decided instead of having a demo on the stage, I will walk you through all the user uh, scenarios and the uh, experience that users see on the phone. We have those phones on our booth today uh, from our partners. Right after the session, I'll be there. If you can join me, we can do live demos there and we can walk through the scenarios and, and the different experiences for users. That, that way, you get a hands-on experience. At the same time, you get to ask questions and iterate on those uh, experiences. Finally, summary and road, uh, roadmap. We're starting now, very soon, we're gonna be launching our second uh, release of uh, phone software. So we have a lot of uh, things to do. We have a long way to go, and we have a bunch of things that I anticipate a lot of you are gonna ask about, and that's why we're gonna talk about what are we doing in the short term, long term, and what are we thinking of. Starting off with uh, strategy. So with, with Link 2010, we introduced the Link Phone Edition. And that simply was a phone that is manufactured by partners that is running a software that was built by Microsoft. So we went and we built a software that's the Link Phone Edition software. And we embed that onto devices from multiple partners. This way, we guaranteed basically we had a release of the same uh, cadency with uh, our clients. Customers loved that device, we loved it, it was consistent, and it had many advantages there. Consistency with the uh, Sky for Business or the Link client itself. So whatever you saw on the client, you saw on the phone, the same experience, the same user interaction. And customers loved that because simply they did not have to train the users how to use it. It was very simple, straightforward. What I can do on the client, I can do or expect on the phone. Plug and play aspect of it. So those phones did not need to be provisioned, did not need any work before you provide them to the users. You give them the device, they plug it in, either USB to the PC or to the network, put the credentials that they use every day on their PC, and voila, phone is up and running. No, no uh, complications there. This device is not used for any other solutions, so it was simple. You get the device, you plug it in, and it plays. Unified management. So you got a device from Polycom, from HP, from Astra, from whichever partner that provided Link Phone Edition, you manage them through Skype for Business uh, LAC or the uh, administrator uh, portal. There was nothing special there. You did not need to do any other, uh, you did not need any other tool or third party tool to manage them. So customers looked at that and said, we love it, that's great. However, as we expanded and as our deployments started getting into different industries and different market segments, and we noticed that or realized that this is not gonna scale. Customers needed extended features, features that exist on the phone. 
not really on the software. Specific features, for example, I need to do paging, I need to do intercom. Certain features that do not exist in Sky for Business and would not be built in Sky for Business because it is not a unified communication feature. It's a hardcore phone feature. Those phones could not do it because that phone simply ran Windows NT, on top of it, a piece of software that runs, and that's it. We could not do any flexible manageability of the, the device itself. Administrators, for example, were looking for ways to, I want to manage the device separately from the user. So the user profile signs into the phone, great. But I want to have specific uh, features and basically administration capabilities on the device itself. Well, the device did not has its own brain and could not do that. If a user signs in, that phone belongs to the user, period. We did not have that much options here in terms of portfolio, in terms of devices, in terms of regional coverage, because simply those phones were manufactured for Link or Skype for Business. And for that, partners were able to basically provide in the market one or two different devices for Skype for Business or Link, but they could not really expand on the portfolio. And it was really hard to get into different markets, other segments, and, and, and basically look after those different personas. But we had a different type of device. I think I'm not mistaken, we used to call it a qualified for Link. That is basically a SIP phone that does the minimum requirements to register to Skype for Business or Link and have a call, and that's it. And that did not really cut it because you love the features in it and the stuff that you can do, but it's not considered what customers call, always call the first class citizen of Link or Skype for Business. Because that phone did not have all the features and capabilities that you see on the client. It, it did not do any of that. It just was a basic, simple phone. Back to the DTMF and, and, and analog era. And that's where we decided we are focusing in our strategy on the IP phone program. So partner IP phone program, in, in brief, takes the advantages, all the advantages of the areas of the SIP phones that we're looking for and, and put them together into an engineering program. What we do here is we qualify, certify, and, and work with the best in the market, providers for SIP phones. They bring those phones. We built a program. That program basically dictates how the experience should be for unified communication. What are the minimum requirements in terms of security, uh, uh, connectivity? Uh, how do we support that? So we have a program, part of the program, how, how do customers get into support? I have a problem with the phone. I don't know if it's a SIP stack or if it's the Skype for Business integration or it's the hardware. Who do I call? So I call Microsoft or I call the partner. Either way, we have a program built there so that we can take that, we understand where the problem is and we channel it into the right team. Engineering program basically is a specification document we share with the partners saying, here are the features that are mandatory that you need to build. Here are the optional features that you want to pick up based on your market segments. What works in Germany does not work in, in, in North America. What works in Asia does not work in Germany or Europe in general. So partners decide what are the extended features that they want to go after and, and build for the customers. Those specifications have details of this is how the experience should be, this is how engineering-wise you need to develop, and, and this is the test plan that you're going to test. And once the phone passes that, it goes into third-party lab that is not Microsoft or the partner themselves, and third-party lab perform all those tests, aggressive tests, and come up with a result that that phone is certified for that specific version. So one, you guarantee that you get the Skype for Business experience that you're looking for, the core features that we can associate that phone with the Skype for Business client. At the same time, you have the, all the other bases covered in terms of supportability, performance, uh, and, and so on. Another core principle that we took into this uh, approach is unified user experience. And that's something was really core in, in the Link Phone Edition. I want that phone to look and feel like Skype for Business. That is also part of the program that we're not compromising in. And we'll see a bunch of slides in a, in a bit. Unified IT Pro experience. 
So we have Polycom, Yealing, Audiocodes. Those are the phones today that are certifying for Skype for Business. Polycom has already passed the certification for Cloud PBX while we launched Cloud PBX back in December 2015. Yealing and Audiocodes are actually in the process now of uh, finalizing the certification. Very soon, a couple of weeks, we're going to be announcing that those phones are certified. We're going to look into the IT Pro experience. So each one of those partners, they have their tool to manage that phone because it's a traditionally a SIP phone. But we're working with them to have support for IT Pro in multiple levels, within Skype for Business, a long term in Skype for Business, and open that if you want to work with other partners basically to do that. Plug and play aspect is very important of, of that program that we brought into the IP phone program. So if we look into the unified user experience, each one of those partners, they build their interface that matches the Skype for Business skin. The icons, the, uh, uh, the color palettes, strings, fonts, even the experience that you would see normally in uh, Skype for Business. And that's what we're enhancing on and iterating on with every release. And by the way, those phones are going to be releasing every uh, six months. So you're looking into two releases a year. And it's not something that you would expect every year to see a bunch of features. That's something that we're going to be releasing at least twice a year. In terms of management or centralized management, I, I encourage you to go look into uh, or actually attend this uh, session online. It was on, if I'm not mistaken, Tuesday. This session details the IT Pro experience. What we're looking for is today we have an M-band provisioning uh, solution where Sky for Business, you have a bunch of commandlets to control the top 25 or 30 or so uh, capabilities or features that you want on the phone. However, for detailed management and analytics on the phones, we are working toward de delivering a first-class Skype for Business cloud management solution that will allow you to provision, manage, and do analytics on, on your devices, regardless of which partner device you have. In terms of plug and play, that breaks into three principles. The procurement process, where those phones today, they have a SKU specially for Skype for Business. So you go to A-Link to buy a phone and you like the specific T48G, you buy that with a specific SKU, that phone is going to come with the Skype for Business uh, pre-installed in it as a firmware. You don't need to upgrade the, uh, or, or, or do anything. Deployment also is taken into consideration where you have a single firmware for online and on-prem. So as most of you might know today, we have our Skype for Business offering, you have either an on-prem server deployment or you have an online deployment. And a lot of the times you have hybrid with a bunch of users here, a bunch of users there, or, and so on. The same firmware is built to work for both online and on-prem. So me as a user, I come in the morning, I sign in, and I'm an on-prem user. I don't need to know that I'm on-prem. The phone will work for me just fine. Another user comes in from online within my organization, signs in, and the, work, the phone works fine. If you come to the booth, you'll see that the phones there are registered to a tenant, just a public tenant that we created for the event. Yesterday, I was in a demo, and I signed out from the tenant. I signed in as my Microsoft credentials. The phone just signed in and became my phone, just the one sitting on my desk. There's no provisioning required, and this is a huge tip especially for those that has an experience with a traditional telephony system, either a very old TDM system or modern IP telephony system where I need to provision the phone, get the Mac, put it in the system, register it, and give it a bunch of configurations, add an extension. This phone, basically, you get it out of the box, you plug it in, the user signs in with their credential that they use every day on their PC, and the phone is theirs, and it's up and running. So as an admin, you do not need to do anything there. We developed a low-touch sign-in option. So previously, we had the option of username and password on the phone, which was a killer, <laughs> the least to say. We had an option of PIN authentication, where you had to remember your PIN and extension. You forget your, your PIN, you need to go to set this up. And honestly, until now, I don't know where to set that up. 
I, I had to go and search to find that. So we had the pairing where I connect my phone to my PC in order to basically uh, sign in using my client. So we wanted something low touch. I don't need to touch the phone and I can do that simply just sign in remotely even if I want to. We'll see that in, in the slides later on. In terms of operation, Sky for Business provide an in-band management settings to the tenants basically. So as a tenant admin, you go in and you manage those and you change them. Within in-band, you don't need to use any tool there. And the defaults are set so that they just work for most customers. You can go and tweak those if you want. This is just a quick note I saw yesterday in Jamie's session and I thought I'll, I'll just add it here that we stand behind this with our SLA agreement. So when you sign an Office 65 agreement, there is an SLA there with money back guarantee. And that includes, if you look into the last bullet there, the highlighted one, certified IP phone. So those phones, we stand behind the quality of the audio. Not only the phone can register, the phone can sign in, the phone can make a call, the phone does not fail when it makes a call or during a conference. We stand behind the uh, audio quality. So let's look quickly into the portfolio. This is where, you, if you go to Skype for Business uh, website, you have a uh, device portfolio or device uh, catalog where you can basically navigate and see what phones are certified for on-prem, online, watch version, and so on. So here you can filter by server or service version that you have. You can filter by the uh, partner. You can filter by the price point. But today we're focusing on Cloud PBX, what is coming into the cloud and what's supported for cloud. Again, anything that's supported for cloud is supported for on-prem, but not the other way around, it's true. So in December 2015, when we launched Cloud PBX, we had a bunch of devices from Polycom ranging from the VVX 200 up to the 600, the high-end phone. Today, roughly October, I just for October there, but roughly in, in a week or a couple of weeks, we're looking into two partners uh, addition, Audio Codes and Yealink. Yealink is coming with three uh, devices from high-end, mid-range, and low-end phone. Audio Codes are adding two devices, one of which comes with the side card built, integrated within the device. This is very uh, common with customers. They like the idea that that phone comes in with the side card I don't need to plug in. By the way, both Yealink and Polycom, they have a side card that's compatible with those phones. Beyond October or before the springtime, we're looking into a couple of uh, devices being added. So Yealink is interested in bringing multiple devices for multiple uh, portfolios, basically, and users, not only a, a user device. And the range really from low end to the high end and the different usages. Audio Codes also is introducing uh, several devices. If you have a chance, please pass by their booth. You're going to find the range that they have and, and the phones. Just a quick look. Polycom, we have a range from the VVX 200, 300, up to the 600. And we have the Real Presence Trio for conferencing. E-Link, we have three devices. The largest one is the, uh, the, uh, the high-end one is the T48G. That is a large touch screen. Beautiful experience. T46 is, is more of a mid-range with buttons, and, and that's more of the informational worker. And you have a low-end one that you can use for common area phones or basic purposes. Audio codes have two range of phones, the 440 and 430, high definition. And if you have an experience with Skype for Business, you definitely know the background of audio codes. They are one of our top partners when it comes to uh, gateways, and they're very expert when it comes to audio. So you expect the best audio quality out of those phones. So let's look into the IT Pro plan and deploy. Personally, if you ask me, I hate to disappoint everyone and say there's no plan and deploy. You get the phone, you plug it in, you sign in, and the phone is up and running. But the reality is you do need to tweak that, especially for large organizations. When you look into, I have previous phones from on-prem. What do I do with them? I have different personas. I have different requirements when it comes to 
upgrading firmware and stuff like that. So if we look into any organization, if the supported phones, as you've seen before, we have two ranges, one of which is the link phone edition. That phone is still <coughs> supported until the end of life for the uh, link phone edition software, which is extended end of life 2023. There were multiple ranges of those phones. However, for Cloud PBX, the one supported is the one with uh, the phones with the USB. So we no longer support PIN authentication in online for those phones. The way you sign into an Arius phone or Link Phone Edition phone, either you connect the USB to your PC so that you can sign in from your PC, or you use the PIN authentication on the phone. PIN authentication is not supported, so we look into three phones here that are currently supported for Cloud PBX. In terms of partner programs, partner IP phone program, we have three partners that we mentioned. And as we go, we discover and research additional partners and devices. Our goal really is to not to have 15 partners, but at the same time, we want to make sure we cover every persona you have every device portfolio you have, every usage region. So every region, they have their own partner that they want to work with in terms of devices and segments as well. What works for enterprise is different than SMB. So if you're migrating phones, if you currently have an on-prem deployment and you're migrating phones from on-prem to online, you want to make sure they have the minimum firmware required in order to work for online. So for Link Phone Edition, this is the minimum firmware required, and it's basically it was released in May 2015. For the partner IP phone program, each one of those partners, they have a release number, and this is the minimum firmware that you need to have in order to connect to online. For the Link Phone Edition, to download the software, the latest firmware, you need to do that, by the way, before you migrate the user or the phone to the online. So you want to make sure you go to the download center and download the latest uh, firmware if you don't have it. In terms of SKU and just to iterate on the plug and play, every partner have developed a, a SKU especially for Skype for Business. So if you're buying a Yealing phone, you want to make sure you buy the Skype for Business edition. If you're buying an audio codes, you want to buy the SFB edition. Polycom have done the same thing in our uh, launch and you have the dash 19 dash 019 as a product ID. Just to make sure you don't get the open SIP phone and then you need to download the Skype of business, uh, Skype for business firmware on top of it. Thanks for the note. So again, just to iterate uh, 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 on this, the phones are supported. The firmware is built to work for online, on-prem, or hybrid. Now you get those phones, and you have sign-in options on the screen. <coughs> those sign-in sign options are displayed based on your topology automatically to your network and find out if you're online, on-prem, or hybrid. So the sign-in option, which we usually use as a safety net, the user ID, and this is where you click on the phone to put your username and your password to sign into the phone. The second option that was traditionally available on uh, on-prem, which is available until now in on-prem if that phone is connecting to a server, the PIN authentication. You have a PIN and you have an extension, you click on this, Put your pen and extension, you sign in. By a PC is the pairing method, and this is where you connect your phone PC port into your PC, and you have a soft software downloaded into the PC and detects that automatically, and the client promotes you to enter your password only. And finally, this is what we developed for the new release uh, that you're going to see now, which is the web sign in. And this is, a, this is a way, basically, for users to sign in using their browser, whether it's a mobile browser or their PC browser, so that you have a low touch on, on the phone itself. We're going to see all of that in a minute.
this is just a snapshot of a phone that is not connected uh, to, if you don't have the via PC, for example, to reduce the options for users so that they don't get confused. If the phone is not connected to the PC, automatically you see that the via PC option disappears. This is the third option, via PC. If the phone is not actually connected to the PC, it does not show there. So how does the pairing work? You simply need the software plugin that you download in your PC from partners. So we have from Polycom, from Yealink, from Audio Codes. And the pairing provides you with two sets of features. One is this sign-in and authentication, simplify it for you. And one is simply synchronizing your PC with your phone. So in terms of sign-in, we found, by the way, in average, when we do a user research, the average user entered their password in five seconds or less. So when your phone is connected to your PC, as soon as you start your PC, you get that, promotes you to enter your password. It takes you five seconds. You hit enter, and the phone is signing in. So it's an easy way to sign into your phone. It synchronizes your phone lock experience with the PC. So your, your phone has a lock mechanism to protect the phone from basically protect your information on the phone. So if you lock your PC, the phone locks. You unlock your PC, the phone unlocks. You take your PC and you go to a meeting room, the phone locks, and so on. You get a bunch of features like click to call. So from my PC, if, I, if the phone is chosen as my default uh, device or preferred device, I click to make a call, the call goes to the phone. Or someone calls me, I, I click answer, the call goes on, on, on my desk phone. Once I have the call on my desk phone, I'll be able to switch devices. So I want to switch it back to the headset. I want to switch it from the headset to the phone. I'd be able to do that easily. I can start video and, and, and desktop sharing from my PC while the audio is going to my phone. And you have all those media options. To deploy that, and by the way, the software is currently is, uh, what we call BTOE, Better Together Over Ethernet. And the reason is that we do the pairing over the Ethernet cable that connects from your phone to your PC. We really encourage customers to standardize BTOE or pairing for every user because it makes their life easy. It makes their experience much better. So the way to deploy it today, we support that on Windows platform only. And either a single user download, they can go and download it from the partner's website double click on it, install it, and it's up and running. Or the ad administrator can distribute that and install it for users using System Center Configuration Manager as an example or any other tool that they have in the data center where they can push it to PCs, run it, and make it uh, run by default. And BTOE really have two modes that it operates on. One is auto mode, which is the default. Simply, when I connect my phone to my PC, the phone is going to promote me as uh, the PC is going to promote me as you can see to enter my password. So it propagates automatically my username, and it surfaces that in front of me. I put my username, I hit enter, and that's it. For security purposes, or some customers prefer to have an additional way of authentication just to make sure I'm pairing the right phone with the right person. There's a manual mode. And in this mode, I need to read out of the screen, as you can see here. This is a Polycom screen. I need to read a specific code and put that into my PC and hit Enter, basically, to pair those two together. And band settings. So part of the certification program, we, we provide partners with the specifications of what do you need to read from the server? So when the phone connects to Skype for Business, what do you get from in-band settings? We have a bunch of settings there, around 30 plus settings. And those are basically the settings that the admin can push to the phone through Skype for Business without using any third party tools. For example, you want the device upgrade to be on or not on, on that user. Do you want the phone to receive upgrades and download them and automatically when they're available or not? The time format. The inter-digit timeout, when I enter, when I'm dialing, what is the timeout between digits? Do I want BTOE or Better Together of Ethernet to be enabled or disabled? It's enabled by default for auto. 
what's the power saving mode that I want to have for working hours and off hours and so on. Details of those settings, you can find them on TechNet. This is the link to it. Our goal really is not to take every single setting that an admin needs and put it in the end band. Our goal is to have the basic ones so that a lot of the simple deployments, even for larger customers sometimes, they say, I, I don't want to have detailed you know, manageability and parameters to sit and deal with. I want the basic things that every customer would need, and that's it. Beyond that, I can use third party or I, can, I don't need any other tool. And that's what we're after. As you know, those phones are SIP phones. And if you look, for example, the, uh, at the Polycom phone, that phone literally has over 2,000 parameters that you can tweak and change. So if you want to go beyond the basic parameters and server settings that you want to do today, you can do that using the third party or the partner themselves provisioning solution. So audio codes have their own plugin into their management solution that they have today for gateways, and that plugin allows you to manage and, and, uh, those phones. Polycom have a provisioning server. Most of our customers today, they like that. They deploy it, that they already have Polycom uh, Cloud PBX phones. And that server allows you to manage pretty much everything on the phone. There are partners as well that are working, third-party software partners, that are developing solutions to add into that experience. Our plan going forward is basically, as you might have known, we have uh, made an acquisition to a technology from Event Zero, and we are using that to build a cloud-based management solution. That management solution is going to provide you with provisioning tools, analytics tools to do analytics on, on the phones, management and operation alerting. You're going to be able to do all the magic that you imagine on phones. I want to group phones together. I want to apply a device profile on those phones. I want to be able to, anything that you can imagine in terms of device management and analytics, you'd be able to do on using that cloud solution. Let's look into fir firmware upgrade considerations. So today you, you, you create a tenant or you have a tenant. By default, that tenant is going to have the device update enabled by default. You can go and change that. Using PowerShell commands, you can go into Skype for Business and change that and say false. And the reason is that customers usually do not want to have those unmanaged. They need to have device upgrade, a pretty much managed process. I have a, a firmware. I need to download it, test it, evaluate it. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to start pushing it into different branches and different users on my own terms. I don't want whenever it's available, all users start receiving upgrades. So you can go ahead and you can disable that auto uh, update. You can use the partner solutions today to manage which phones get the upgrade. So I can say those phones, whenever there's an upgrade, they can use it. Those phones, I'm going to push to them the firmware that I want. And this is very important because today you requested, for example, a feature. We have customers that went out and talked to Polycom and said, hey, there's this feature. It's a based on the phone. Sky for Business does not provide it as a Sky for Business experience on the phone, and I want that to be done in a configuration in a certain manner. That was a hash five for a transfer or something like that. So that's the customer said, hey, I have 50,000 users. They're used to do hash five to do a transfer or something of that sort. And I don't want to change that experience, regardless of your nice screen with the easy transfer button. I want the hash five thing to be available on the phone. So Polycom went out and did that implementation, provide them with a device profile that they can deploy and, and run on, on those phones. So admin wants to have that control that I want a specific build to put on the phone and not any build. Something we're working on that's not out yet also is an admin notification of when there is a new uh, firmware. So down at the bottom you see this is the admin uh, portal for Office 65. And the corner there's a bell that shows you whenever there's a new notification for you as a tenant admin that you need to pay attention to. 
And here we're going to add a week or so in advance. Before there's a fir new firmware release, we're going to update that one and say, hey, there's a new firmware. Click here to learn more information, what's coming up in that firmware, and, and so on. Once the firmware is available and downloaded to phones, this is how the user experience looks like. This is the Polycom phone. So the user receives a notification that, hey, there's a software upgrade in the phone. And customers really love this because me as a user, I'm sitting there, I just came in the morning. I know I'm not going to be using the phone. So yeah, well then, let me upgrade it now and get it ready. If I dismiss that, I have it setting as a software update button on my phone. Whenever I'm ready, I can go and do that. And there's a lot of details there that we're working on. What if the user never clicks on that? What if, how can I force it? How can I do a graceful upgrade so that whenever the user is not using the phone or I make sure the user is not using the phone, I can upgrade and so on. Common area phone. This is a topic that I, I thought worth mentioning here. I had tons of conversations uh, this week around it. The challenge for common area phone, really, when it comes to Skype for Business is that if you look into any traditional telephony provider, the, the solution is focused on the phone itself. So I get a phone, I connect it, I provision it with the MAC address, I give it an extension, that's it. That's a common area phone. If I want a user phone, here's a profile that I add and a username and password, and I add a user to the phone. If I want to have unified communication and I have unified capabilities on the phone, I need to add those on top of the phone. So I move it from being a common area basic phone into a user phone. Skype for Business really comes from a unified communication background. The, the phone is just an endpoint for a user. The user is a unified communication user that has I am a presence and conference and video and everything. So you want to take that phone and strip all those away and make a common area phone is different than having something ready-made. And that's something certainly we have to address in Skype for Business. And when we look into it, we, that, we look into an, an, uh, what, does, what do we need for a common area phone? First, you, first and foremost, you need a low-end option phone. You can't have a $160 phone that calls of common area phone. And that's what's covered today and through our partners. So, Audio codes, Yaling, Polycom, they have a low-end device, and we're looking to add more devices from those partners and uh, into the category of a low-end phone. But also in the near future, we're looking into additional device categories, not only for that, because common area phone is not only the phone that's sitting in a lobby or sitting in a kitchen. Common area phones are a lot more than that. We have analog, we have conference, we have different devices that we consider a common area. We have accessories, so that phone requires a wall mount, requires some cabling, requires a bunch of things, accessories, requires uh, a casing, for example, in certain manufacturer industries and, and, and manufacturer flooring. And that is available today through partners. Another functional requirement in a common area phone is really uh, specific uh, functions. I want the phone to be able to do an auto dial when I pick up the handset. Those are the courtesy or emergency phones. I pick up the call, the phone makes a call immediately. Or I want to restrict the capabilities on the phone. I want the PC port to be off. I want the ringer in other words, to, to normalize always to normal. I want to disable the do not disturb on the phone. I want to do a bunch of things for a common area phone to harden that phone. That is also available today through the device profile that the partners provide you with. Also on the roadmap to, for that, we're looking into changing or enhancing the UI and the UX on the phone. So a common area phone, you don't want it to show that the phone is locked. So it, it gives you the impression that the phone is not usable. But at the same time, you want to lock the phone and you want to close certain aspects on it. You want to make it user-friendly easier for your guests. So someone comes in as a guest, they want to be able to use that common area phone. At the same time, it has to be consistent with what users are used to. I leave my desk, I go to the lobby, I know how to use that phone. When we look into authentication, I need the phone to have a specific license because that common phone does not do IM and presence and conference. So today you give you, your users a license, that license enables you to do a bunch of things in unified communication. 
that phone is really not making use of those features. It's just not right that that phone has the same user license. So we're looking into specific license for those phones. What we do today that we, we understand and recognize very well that customers are not willing to pay a full user license for a common area phone and our licensing desks are aware of that and, and account managers also consider that. However, the challenge is for small and medium customers, they don't have access to an account manager and they don't have that facility and that's why we're working on a specific license and device profile for those phones. Password expiry, so those phones, they don't complain. So your user, when their phone signs out, they sign in again. Those phones do not. And as an admin, you wanna make sure those phones are always on. So today, you can change the policy for the tenant-wide of the password expiration. What we're working on heavily now is to have a specific um, policies for those phones so that they either refresh their token or they have some sort of renewal so that they always remain signed in. Their password doesn't expire. At the same time, we're giving the admin the power to revoke that. Someone decided to take the phone and go home. We need to be able to revoke that uh, certificate. In terms of provisioning and management, so today I need to, I buy the phone, I put it there, I provision it, then I, to manage it, I need to use the partner's provisioning server and device profile to manage that phone to do everything I want, which is available. However, the experience here requires you to use multiple tools. And as we move toward the uh, solution, uh, our cloud management solution for devices, we are gonna have that story covered so that when you go to your management solution in Skype for Business, you're gonna be able to say, this is a common area phone, lock this, lock this, apply this profile, treat it this way, put it in that group, and so on. And finally, sign in. Those phones, usually a technician goes and deploy those phones and the admin need to do the sign in and all that process. So today we can do a remote sign in using a couple of uh, solutions, a couple of options, sorry, in Skype for Business. Later on in the future, we're looking into building a bulk provisioning enhancement solution so that as a technician, I can go basically pick up any phone from my chair and just plug them into the areas and IM that to the admin and say, by the way, this MAC address is in this lobby, this MAC address is in this lobby. And the IT pro can basically just plug those in, hit enter, and those phones sign in somehow. Let me skip this one for now. I wanna talk about the device profile. So when we look into what do customers wanna do with the common area phone, this is a list of things that usually customers like to do. I wanna disable the certain features on the phone. I want to, for example, I wanna disable the forward. This is super important. I don't want someone to forward the common area phone into their phone. I wanna disable the do not disturb, or I want it to disappear. I don't want it to show there. So all those parameters are configurable. Today you can configure those using the device profile. So you can go and enable, disable, whatever features you want, and you can push that into the phone. The right-hand screen is an example of a uh, auto dial. So I want the phone, as soon as it goes off hook, it dials a number, specific number that's configured there. And I want to disable everything else on the phone, assuming that it's not an uh, for example, a phone without a dial pad. It's a normal phone with a dial pad, but I want to implement that. And this is an example here how we can do it. Let's talk a bit about the firmware release. So as we mentioned earlier, we are looking into releasing twice a year. And every release is gonna have tenant admin features and end user experience features. Of course, beside what happens under the hood of bug fixes and, and engineering enhancements and stuff like that. So with the first release with Polycom in 2015, we had a bunch of very exciting end user features. A one click join meeting that I basically, when I have a meeting and I get a reminder, I get one click I can join that meeting. And this is by the way, out of the box, there's no configuration you need to do on the phone. We had exchange integration, we have the pairing, we have visual voicemail, we're gonna look into all of those when we go down to the end user features. In terms of admin, we had the device updates, so I can push the updates through the in-band settings, I can have a full in-band provisioning features. With the release that's coming up now with partners, 
we're looking into enhancing the visual voicemail. We have enhancements in pairing. So the BTOE or the pairing between the phone and the uh, PC. We have a, a brand new Skype user interface. So those phones, if you happen to buy a phone from Polycom and audio codes, uh, sorry, Polycom and Yealink and put them side to side, they look totally different. They are designed for their market. And even though they are Skype for business phone, they look totally different in terms of the UI. Today, you're going to see the same color palette, the same icons, and, and so on. A phone lock mechanism basically to protect the phone. Again, because in Skype for Business, the phone is a UC phone. It's not an IP phone only. That phone has your calendar, your next meetings. It, it, it shows that you have a, another interview in half an hour. It shows your voice messages. And you need to protect that phone. You need to lock it. But that lock mechanism shouldn't be super annoying. You don't want to unlock the phone every time you want to make a call. So we built a phone lock mechanism that synchronizes with the pairing. When I disconnect my PC or I take my laptop and go to a meeting room, the phone will lock. And there's ways to tweak that basically and change the uh, lock experience. At the same time, we had to enable dialing when the phone is locked. Any phone at any time should be able to dial 911 or the emergency number in Europe or anywhere else. And now with the introduction of Cloud PBX, you are paying, uh, sorry, uh, Cloud PST, and you're paying a fee for a certain number of hours, and most customers don't care about, they're not afraid of abuse of PST and calling. So they say, you know what? All phones should be able to dial out and make calls when the phone is locked. So that's also a capability that you can do today. A lot of things in phone lock, and we're enhancing on it as we go, and we're adding more end user control, bless you, and admin control. What's coming up in the next release around spring time frame, we're looking into a bunch of things in the uh, tenant admin. And those, by the way, are the core requirements, not the extended one or optional ones. We have some customers, uh, some partners that support IP version 6 and others don't. And this is something critical they, they need to close the gap on. We need to provide the log access of the phones when, when the phone provides any logs. The tenant admin need to be able to read those logs and analyze them. Multiple emergency number, this is a requirement coming from different countries, specifically in Europe. Telometries and different aspects. In terms of user features, we're iterating again on the uh, UI and the UX. So this time, we're not only looking into the user interface, but also the user experience. What is the workflow for making a call, for joining a meeting, for searching for a contact? Because the phone has a local contact, Corporate contact, favorites. You have a bunch of contacts basically there. What is the experience? I want to be able to search and find that contact and make a call. But I don't want to confuse the mic on my peripheral. This contact from that contact and so on. So all the user experience we're iterating on those. Boss admin or delegation. What happens when I set someone as a delegate for me in uh, Skype for Business? I want that to reflect automatically on the phone. This is one of the hardest jobs that we're going to be working on for the UX because sit with a customer in Germany, they tell you totally different experience than the customer in North America. What is a must to do in North America is actually an insult in Germany. In North America, hey, I'm the delegate. Uh, my boss's daughter is calling. You know what? I'm going to flip the call because she doesn't want to talk to me. Teenagers don't talk. When they call, it's an emergency or they need money. They text. So she doesn't want me to pick up and say, hey, hi, yeah, let me find your father. No, just flip the call, send it there, let him pick up. That's what they want. Talk to Jeremy, he's like, no, regardless of who's calling, it's an insult. I have to pick up, greet, put on hold, and do that transfer. Also, when you look into how do the tenant, ad, uh, sorry, the uh, executive assistants perform their job, it's totally different between Europe and the US. In the US, the more of busy lines appearance. I want to see my boss's line there. I can pick up the call. I can put it on hold and transfer it. In Germany, I want, to foc I want to forward all calls to the PA. They pick up the call. They do the filtering, and they hand over to the manager. 
So when it comes to the user experience, we need to walk a thin line that provides those two experiences without having the tenant admin to configure a bunch of things to make them happen. So I go, I assign someone as my delegate in Skype for Business, boom. The form provides me with all those experiences. I know how to do consultative transfer. I, know, I see the busy line appearance. I can make a call of, on behalf of my boss. I can do all of that stuff. And there's a star here. We have around 16 optional or extended features that partners would want to pick out from based on their market and th what they hear from their customer and what they want to go after next. This is a roadmap. That's why I don't feel much comfortable listing all the features and capabilities we're talking about here, but happy to look into this with you individually. If you have any concerns or any feature that you're looking for, we can talk about whether it's going to make it in, in, in this iteration or the next one. This is just a quick note that everything, by the way, I'm talking about here is, is being documented. So we're, we're releasing two documents here when it comes to phones. One is getting phones, and this helps you to make the right decision as a decision maker of what phone do I buy, what feature that that, had phone, that, that phone has, what phones from what I have already supported, everything you need to know to make a decision to buy the right phone for Cloud PBX. The next one is really deployment and operation guide. And for those who are experienced with Microsoft documentation, we used to have a release cadency and, and stuff. Now we publish literally every couple of days if we need to. So any feature that comes up new, any bug that gets fixed, you're going to see it in the documentation immediately. A couple of important notes for IT Pro. So we released uh, a program. I don't know if it's a program. I don't know what it's called. It's a Skype operations framework. It's called framework. This framework is really awesome. I come, by the way, from the field. I worked in Microsoft as a technical seller and solution seller for seven years. And every time we have a customer that's saying, hey, your Skype for Business or your link sucks, we go there, we analyze what happened, and it's almost the same problem. They had the wrong partner. They had a non-qualified partner. They did not have a guideline as of how do I deploy Skype for Business or Link. And that was on us, really. We did not provide customers with a framework of this is what you need to be doing. So we came up with this to serve the purpose. It's a framework, basically, that works with customers through the plan, deploy, operate phases of, of our solution. And it has different contents and material from every partner. So any partner that works with Skype for Business in terms of hardware partner that requires to go through that framework is included here. This is an example here. If you go to this link, Skype Operations Framework, you're going to see that we have two con documents there or two contents there for the currently available phones, which is Polycom phones, how to provision and, and, and look into that. How do you do the network assessment? How do you plan, basically, your deployment? If you currently have an Avaya or Cisco or Alcatel, and that solution already has a quality of service deployed in your network, how do you put another system there with a quality of service? How do you manage all of that stuff? There are two sessions here. One is uh, Ready Your Network. This was on uh, Tuesday. You can go and listen to the recording. And we have a Skype operation framework sessions, two of them, coming up on Friday. One is uh, really what is SOF, what is it exactly, and what does it include? And the other one is a drill down. It's more technical of walkthrough of the whole uh, framework and where we're going with that. Bunch of trainings there and videos and recordings that you can go and listen to. I encourage you to. Let's look at the exciting stuff here. By the way, can you show me with a show of hands, how many of you have an experience with a Skype for business phones or had any linked phones before experience? Cool. Now you're going to appreciate this. So user experience, really, we looked into what, who's the persona, what is he or she trying to do, at what time. 
And we did not go really the traditional way of here's the list of 2,000 features that I need to provide and let the tenant admin deal with that and put them together like a Lego and build something out of it. And that's why you find here I put some statements of what did we look at when we considered that feature. This is a quick reminder. If you don't have a tenant, if you don't have Skype for Business Cloud PBX tenant, simply go to aka.ms slash E5 trial. E5 is the uh, license combo basically that you get Cloud PBX and everything underneath. And if you go there, it's literally five minutes to set up a new tenant. No credit card requirements, nothing is required there. I think it's a month and a half, two months, three months trial, something like that, which you can extend as well. Just create a name for your own virtual company, create username, password, you're in, in five minutes. Next, add a couple of users, add them the license, and those users are ready to have a phone. So everything you're gonna see here, you can set up in five minutes if you have one of those phones. So let's first look into sign-in. We spoke about different options to sign into a phone. One of the new releases, uh, options that we release is the web sign-in. As the name suggests, you sign in through a browser. And please, I encourage everyone to pass by the, our booth or the partner's booth, and you can do that yourself and play around with it. This is mind-blowing. Every customer that we tested this with, by the way, every release we have now we're releasing goes through, other than the internal testing and validation with the lab, third-party lab, we deploy it in Microsoft internally. Then we deploy it to tap customers, and those are the customers that do the testing and evaluation with us, and we get their feedback. This thing was a winning port in every single deployment. It's simply you click on web sign-in. You have a phone that's signed out. You want to sign into it. You click on web sign-in, and the phone displays to you a code that says, hey, go to this browser and use this code. Follow the instructions. You go to a browser. In this case here is a mobile browser. And you have the device login page. Enter the code, here's the code. Enter your email, enter your password. And of course, if you use, your, if you use it once, your username and password is saved there. So the next time, you need to just click Next. So you, you follow instructions. You put the code, put your username and password, you hit Enter, and the phone is signing in, receives a token, starts signing in. And that's something you can do remotely. So as a technician, I can plug in a phone, generate the code, and IM it to my IT Pro. That code is valid for 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, it, you need to refresh it, basically. When we looked into sign in, users don't mind signing in either they're using their PC or a mechanism that takes a couple of minutes or something. But, but the one person that really complains is someone that, I have a meeting in three minutes. I'm coming late to office, I walk into phone booth, and I need to take that meeting. So I get into a phone, I click here, I sign in. This process should not take more than a minute, the whole thing with the clicks and stuff. The phone signs in, and as soon as it signs in, it's my phone. That means it's, it has my calendar. That means I get the notification just like I get an Outlook. I click on join, I am in the meeting. However, users that use their PC every day and for some reason they sign out of the phone before they leave or whenever they sign out or they're using hot desking and jumping into a desk that's not theirs, they prefer to use their keyboard. So if you plug in your PC or laptop, sorry, you plug in the US, uh, UTP cable, you immediately get this authentication window from your Skype for Business client and says, hey, enter your password. And we've done some enhancements here for those that have previously played around with it. First, we propagate the right UPN. So if you are an online user, you're going to see your name at your company.com, another domain. Second of all, we surface the client in front of you so that you know there's an action you need to do. And again, it's five seconds, hit enter. The same thing, the phone is receiving a token and signing in. So this is the, sign in, the new sign-in experience that you'd see on Cloud PPX phones. Once you sign in, as soon as you sign in, immediately the phone is going to say, enter your lock code to lock the phone. 
99% of people use one, two, three, four, five, six. By the way, I walk around in our, our office and I put that password and it works every time. And again, customers love that because I don't want to remember pen. Man, I have pen for my voicemail and pen for the phone and pen to sign in and pen for my house and pen for my... I don't want to remember. That's a pen that you create when you sign in. So you know what it is. Once you enter the pen, the phone locks, unlocks with your PC syncing. And even when it's locked, you'd be able to make a 911 call. One click join experience. So as I, today in my Outlook, I get a reminder, I click join, and I join the meeting. And that's exactly what you see on the phone today. This is a Yale link phone. So I receive a notification that says, you have a meeting, and this is the details of the meeting. You click on the green button that says join. And the phone joins a conference, just like you're used to on your PC. If you notice the lower one, it's a locked phone. So this phone is locked. So I don't want people to see the information or details of my meeting. I just see that you have a meeting in the next five minutes, or your next meeting starts in 10 minutes or so on. Pairing. So most of conversations today in corporate start with IM. So I start an IM conversation with someone and we're chatting. And we want to escalate that into a video call. I click call, video call. On my PC, I have the video, I have the IM window up and everything, and the phone calls that person immediately. So I have the audio on my phone and I have the basically uh, video and desktop sharing on my PC. And that allows you also to switch devices. So the call was on the phone, and I have my own office, so I use the speaker phone, but now I want to walk around and I have a wireless Bluetooth headset. I can just put it on and switch to that device. Visual voicemail. So this is your experience today on the client. You see the person that called you, you see the time, you see the duration. And that's exactly the experience you get on the phone. You have a voicemail, you click on voicemail, and you get the visual voicemail representation. You click on a message and you can hear the message. You click call to call the person who called you. Simple, straightforward. This is some, one of the things that we really worked hard on to make it super simple, voicemail. When you, when you talk to customers, do you, do you use voicemail? They say, oh, it's very important. And the reason is a lot of people don't use voicemail, but you know what? They need it, either for compliance, for it's a place where my calls terminate. So I would never say, no, I don't want voicemail, but I don't want the headache of managing it and operating it and, and you know, play around with it. And that's what we did in Cloud PBX. Voicemail is out of the box, natively created for every user that signs in, provisioned, ready to go. Even the greeting message is automatic greeting message. It's a text-to-speech that reads your name and says you're not there and leave a message. You do not need to do anything as a tenant, admin, or end user. Simply, as soon as you're enabled as a user, you get a phone, someone calls you, leave a message, shows up here. That's it. User experience on the phone. You're going to notice also the, the Skype scan on the phone and a very, very similar experience in a meeting. On the left-hand side, you see a snapshot from a Polycom phone, and those are the different settings that you see on the right-hand side. You see a Yaling phone, touch screen. And this is something that we're iterating on in the next release as well. So for this release, what we did is that partners did best effort to meet the Skype color and color palette and icons and phones and the strings that are used in the meetings and everything. And it's extremely close and similar as you can see. What we're doing in the next release, we are actually publishing to, cust uh, to partners a design guideline from the Skype design team. And it's a licensed guideline that has the icons, specific icons, specific colors, font, everything. Now I had the Skype for Business features, capabilities, similar, consistent with my client. I love it. But you know what? That's a phone. I need that to do phone stuff. I need to be able to pin people into my phone and use it as, you know, favorite one-touch call. 
I need to be able to do paging. Create a paging group. When I page, I call those phones and stuff. I need to do intercom in a bus admin environment or so on. I need to do hundreds of those features that do not exist in Skype for Business because they are not, they are phone centric features. They are not really like the auto dial. You'd never imagine to have an auto dial on a soft phone or a client where I, as soon as I put my headset, it calls someone. But that's something that you, you need on a phone. And this is what partners provide today. So we have 10 minutes left, actually nine minutes. I want to leave some generous time for question and answer. And after that, we can head out to the booth and do the demos there and, and play around with the user experiences. Before that, I want to go through the summary and the, more importantly, the roadmap. Just anticipating a lot of questions that I, I've heard in the last couple of days. So in terms of device strategy, Link Phone Edition is supported for Cloud PBX. It works today, and it will be supported until the end of uh, life of the software support. However, we are driving with the partner IP program for all the reasons that we mentioned. The velocity of innovation. And I see the partners here laughing. We see things today, and we say, you know what? This could be better that way. It's like, okay, they go and they develop, and two days later, we have it. Let's test it. That's not something we can do in a link phone edition. We needed more devices. We need a partner that is strong in the SIP, uh, open SIP market that provides all that uh, range of phones that when their customers say, that phone is important to me and I want to see it in Skype for Business, the simple step for them is bring that phone to certification. In a couple of months, you have that phone in Skype for Business. So we're driving our, uh, on uh, uh, going forward with our three uh, third party or IP, uh, partner IP phone program. In terms of device portfolio today, we have a coverage of the low-end, mid-range, high-end phones, side cards, accessories, and we're looking into the different uh, device portfolios. We recognize there are phones that customers are looking for in terms of, for example, the Wi-Fi and DEC for mobility. And when we drill into that, today you are not blocked, so you can buy a solution from a Wi-Fi or DEC uh, partner. And you can do interoperability through a gateway or something. So it's not really, it's a SIP phone. It's not a direct Skype for Business device. We are working on that. We're researching the best partners in the market. We're looking into the personas and the areas that customers want. Rather than certifying three, four different partners with a range of phones, we're looking into the exact scenarios that customer want and need. Because even when you talk about decked phones, there are multiple categories there, or Wi-Fi. There's the category of, hey, I want uh, office mobility so that I can walk around as a supervisor. I have wireless in my hand. That device has a different specification. Even as a hardware, it needs to be big enough so that I don't forget and put it in my pocket and walk away, and small enough that I can actually put it in my pocket. However, if you look into certain industries like healthcare and, and, and other areas, that device needs to be rigid. That device needs to have specific requirements and stuff. So we're researching all the options out there, and we're finding the best solution for that. We're definitely thinking of it. We don't have a timeline on it yet. Another device profile that we're looking at is the, really the analog support. So we still need analog. There are tons of areas that you need analog in. The elevator phone, the overhead paging. You have a bunch of analog requirements that you need to integrate into Skype for Business. Again, today you can do that. You're not blocked. So if you have a gateway, you can connect to that. If you have an on-prem deployment, if you have a CCE cloud connector, all of those options you can do. However, we're discovering the options and certification specifically for the Cloud PBX customers that they do not have any on-prem deployment and they want that analog device to connect to online. And that is also a work in progress with partners. Common area phone, we're iterating more in the features and we're making it simpler for you so that you don't need to use different tools and, and stuff, basically to get a common area phone to function the way you want, especially that common area phone is not, on, is not always the, on, the, cop, the phone in the lobby. You have the conference room. You have different usabilities in terms of the persona that uses it and the, the device profile itself. We're working on enhancing the experience for additional personas. So not every user is an information worker. You have the person who does not even use an username and password. 
you have a user that does not have a PC, so the pairing does not really relate to them. You have the uh, attendant console. You have the uh, executive assistants. We have different personas. I, ha I have the uh, office, uh, home office, for example, phone. So we're looking into all those personas and we're covering the capabilities for them. IT Pro capabilities. There's a whole session for this on Friday. I encourage you to go look into it. It is very detailed and it has a lot of goodness there in terms of analyzing the call quality, performance, everything. UI and UX enhancements, this is something we spoke about. So we're not looking also into the, only into the colors, but the user experience. How many clicks? What is the workflow that I take to, to do my job? Whether I'm joining a meeting or answering a call from my boss or I'm in a shared line appearance environment and so on. And finally, sign in enhancements. This is, this is top of mind when it comes to customers. Not only I want a simple sign in, I want all the options that come with it. I want sign in without a browser. I want to sign in without a username and password. I want sign in that is much, much faster than the current experience today. This is also a work in progress and very soon we're gonna be releasing uh, updates on it. Before I let you go, please join the community. So we have a Skype for Business community out there. This is for IT pros. You get the broadcast, you get the tips and tricks, you get everything, and everyone in Skype team, corporate, is on it. So I'm on it. I look into the updates there. I interact with customers on it. Partners are on it as well. So you get the advice, basically. Please provide us with your feedback and evaluation. And most importantly, what do you see missing? What do you like to get in terms of devices and, and, and the roadmap and what we've seen today? What are the pieces that you feel not covered? The content, did it work for you or not? The workflow, everything, any feedback, often feedback is welcome. If you download the slides, you're gonna see the uh, sessions, everything related to Cloud PBX or Skype for Business, and I highlighted the important ones that are coming up. For example, the Get to Know Skype Operation Framework, the Management IT Pro Tools. We have one uh, yesterday by Jamie, which is, uh, sorry, tomorrow by Jamie. No, that was yesterday. Plan your Cloud PBX. So this is talking about generic Cloud PBX. And I think we're done. Thank you very much.